The event of Christ's birth. And in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, it says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. And Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Wow. If it was at us today, they could have gone to the King's Hotel. Their neighbors, and we could have pleaded with them, please, please, there's a very important event that's supposed to happen. We need to get a very nice suite at the King's Hotel. But there was no King's Hotel. No Radisson Blue, no Sheraton, no Hilton, no guest house, nothing. If only SIM was working back then, there would have been a nice guest house. No guest house for Mary and for Joseph. There was no hospital for them. There was no midwife. In some ways unexpected, but yet they knew the time was coming close, but yet they were compelled. They had to go up to Bethlehem, so to Bethlehem they went to register. And they went slowly. Probably Mary on the back of Ahia. Slowly, slowly. Maybe Joseph was leading that donkey. Maybe... Both of them had donkeys. We don't know all the details, but we know it was slow. It was not easy. It wasn't a trip taken in an ambulance. It wasn't a a trip taken in Lada. It wasn't a trip taken in a hired Benz. It was just a slow, tough journey. But they went in obedience to Caesar, and they went in fulfillment of prophecy that he would be born in the city of David. A king born in the stable. A king from King's Hotel would make sense, but now here's a king born in a stable, and then no nice cradle, no fancy place to lay him. They laid him in a manger, in the feeding trough of those animals. And from the manger he went, he grew, and he went to the cross. As we've been singing about that holy night, O holy night, a night divine, because the king of kings came, and he came to a stable. He came humbly to us. He came humbly. He didn't come as a king to a palace, to a nice, fancy place, but he came humbly And he grew knowing the suffering of the common man, of the common woman, the common family. He knew that suffering because he'd experienced it himself. I wonder about Mary and Joseph, and maybe they told him, you know, when you were born, these were the circumstances. But he lived humbly. He grew humbly. He was a carpenter's son and he learned how to work with his hands. But yet, he was and is the king of kings. And later he himself said, even the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Even foxes have got dens where they can go and hide. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. He associated with the common man. He went with fishermen and walked with them. And he called them, come, walk with me. Hear the words of God. And their lives were changed and transformed. But it all started out in this beautiful little town. And even our graphics this morning show that town, that star above. O little town of Bethlehem. How still we see thee lie. There wasn't a fanfare, there wasn't a band. But we will find out there were some extraordinary events to take place that night. 
Let's stand together and sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. invite all but the children to take your seats and I'm going to ask the kids to come forward. I have something I want to ask you and I need your help in sharing this sermon. Yeah, come on up and if you if you can find a place, have a seat. Make yourselves comfortable. Oh, wow, it's a good crowd. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, even on the carpet there. The sermon's going to be really good today because we got these kids to help. And some of you are saying, oh, yeah, he needs all the help he can get. So in that song and in the scripture that we just read, we've talked about this quiet town of Bethlehem. It's nighttime. A little baby is born and things are quiet. But then it goes on and it talks about there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. That's what they were busy doing. But I want to ask you something here. And you can either holler it out, I can pass you the microphone, but the question I have for you is what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to study for and what do you want to become as a profession? The way you earn your living, the things you do, what do you want to do? Oh, we got hands up already over here. I would like to be a doctor. A doctor, yeah, all right, pass it over here. Let's hear what he wants to be. I want to be a pilot. Be a what? A pilot. Pilot. Oh, yeah. Okay, you take it. Uh, 
I, I really want to be a priest. You want to be a priest? Oh, right. Whoa, yes. <laughs> I want to be a basketball player. Basketball, okay. Who's your favorite player now? Curry. Curry. Uh, Steve, Steph Curry. I tell you what. And you know Steph Curry, here's a little one. If anyone's watching from America, Steph Curry loves the Lord. You can love the Lord and play basketball. And he might be doing it. What's your name? Kabor. Okay, and the other names? Hmm? You, both names. Your father's name? Johannes. Johannes. Okay. Be looking for that shirt. Are you going to play for the Warriors? You never know. Be watching for Johannes on the back of that shirt. He might be the one. Oh, here's someone else. Okay. I want to I be an artist. Artist. All right. All right. Pass it over to him. I want to be an engineer. At least. Hey. And pass it over. She wants to be a princess. A princess. Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. I want to be a scientist. A scientist. Okay. And this one, this boy right over here. I want to be a firefighter. Firefighter, yeah. Oh, we got more. Okay, over there. I want to be a scientist. Hey, good. I want to be a doctor. Doctor, also good. I want to be teacher. Teacher, okay. Good. Oh, a little stretch. You got one? I want to be a lawyer. Lawyer, all right, yes. One more here, then one more over here. Going to be a what? Soccer player. Hey, good. Okay, let me take it. Thank you. And one over here. I want to be a Israeli um, pilot. Hey, a, a pilot? Israeli pilot. I want to be a scientist. Scientist. Okay, one more. I want to be a designer. Uh, which one? Designer. Close oh, designer. Design. Okay. I want to be... I wanna be doctor. Oh, oh boy. Okay, last one. Last one right I there. I wanna be doctor. Doctor. Okay. Wow. You parents, I hope that you're really saving up your money because these kids need a lot of education. Wow. Okay, we're gonna take oh a few more. This is all too good. We have to get a few more. Pass it real quick around. I wanna be doctor. Doctor, all right. Okay, what about you? Be a doctor. Doctor, a lot of doctors. I want to be an astronaut. Astronaut, yes. I want to be police. Hey, be a what? <laughs> hey. I want to be a firefighter. Wow. I want to be a math teacher because I think I'm very good at math. Hey. I want to be a nurse. Nurse, good for you. I want to be a neurologist. Hey, wow. Can anyone spell that? <laughs> oh, one more here. I want to be a judge. Judge, oh. Maybe could you just get those few over there? I want to be a doctor. I want to be a football player. Oh, yeah. I want to be a builder. Hey. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a mechanic. Hey. All right. Oh, thank you. Boy, there's aspirations up here. Do you want to know what I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a shepherd. Yeah, nobody mentioned shepherd. I'm amazed, and I hope by the end of this sermon, if I pass a microphone around, all of you are going to say, I want to be a shepherd. I want to be a shepherd. I want to be a shepherd. Let's listen. You don't want to. Hey, you don't want to be a shepherd. You wait. You listen. Congregation, lift your hands and pray for me, because I have a lot of convincing to do to convince this crowd. Listen up. As, as we continue reading the scripture here, it says there were shepherds, and they were living in the fields, and they were watching their flocks by night. How come no one wants to be a shepherd? 
You see? You want to sleep? You don't want to be up all night watching, hey, all right, yeah, 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 good. But you know, the, the shepherds, they don't care about that. They want to be up all night. They have fun. They're going to get up to some pranks. They're going to go knocking on doors and waking people up and, and making some commotions. That's what shepherds like to do. They all like to have fun. So they're up all night having fun. One of the things I think these shepherds did is they lay on their back in the night and they look up and see the stars. Have you ever done that? Who's ever done that? Did you ever look out and see all the stars at night? Isn't it the most beautiful thing? And did you ever start singing? Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful to see those stars. So I can just see them there laying on their backs and looking at the stars. Did you see that? Shooting stars, comets that are flying across the night sky. They were enjoying. But shepherds, do you think shepherds have a great reputation? No. Uh, hey, anybody say yes? No. No. Resounding no, the shepherds, and even if they got one thumbs down already. The shepherds don't have a good reputation. Here in Addis, shepherds don't have a good reputation at all. And of course, most of you, when you're driving, you see the shepherds with all their flock going through. They're on their way. We know they're going to Kara, but we don't want to go to Kara. We want to go to Shoa and Fantu to get our meat later. But somehow they've got to get the meat there. They've got to get the animals there. And so they're on their way. And do they get in your way in the traffic? Give me a wave. Yeah. They're in the way. You look down the sidewalk, and here they come up the sidewalk, up the, the walking path, and here come all the animals, and who moves? You or the animal? You do. And when you're driving along, suddenly there's a traffic jam, and you think, is this AU weekend? And then you look ahead, and you see the animals running. And you realize it's the shepherds that are giving you a headache. These shepherds are causing you a problem. These shepherds are in your way. And then you say to whoever's in the car or with you on the street, they're not allowed to do that. But did you ever try to tell the sheep or the goats or the cow, you're not allowed to do that? Did anyone ever try? Yeah, they may not be allowed to do it, but they just do it anyway. And they get themselves in trouble and they make trouble for you and they make trouble for me. Pastor Jerry and I, we were crossing over. We were going for a macchiato one day and the traffic, it was speeding. No, you know, everything, uh, anyway, they're just going. They're speeding. Everyone's heading up to, to Sarbet and three lanes of traffic and they're going and we're waiting for our chance, waiting. Have you ever been at the crossing, the, at the zebra crossing, the crosswalk, and you're trying to get across and does anyone stop for you? No. It seems they look at you and then vroom, they change gears so they can go faster to make sure that they get past before you cross. Isn't it so? Yeah. So Pastor Jerry and I, we're standing there, standing there, waiting, 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 looking. Is there any chance to go? And then I turned and I looked this way and then I yelled at Pastor Jerry, run. <laughs> and it was either run into the traffic or, and I looked up the sidewalk, the whole sidewalk was filled. There were four donkeys side by side, not in a row, side by side, and they're running down the sidewalk. So I said, Jerry, either they're going to run us over or the cars are going to run us over. <laughs> At least we know someone driving the car, maybe he's going to use the brakes. Shepherds. All of us can tell shepherd stories, but it says the shepherds were there in the in the night, they're watching their flocks. I was going to say minding their own business, but I doubt they were. They're having some fun out there. And suddenly something happens. Something else about shepherds, before I tell you what happened. Are any of you sitting beside a shepherd this morning? No. How do you know? How do you know you're not? Aha, because they can't smell the person next to them. Yeah. <laughs> if it was a shepherd, you know they're going to smell like the sheep. And if the ushers saw them coming in, the ushers would say, we have a very special place for you right at the back. We'll just keep you here. 
They were different in that way. Not always welcome in church, maybe. Not always welcome in the synagogue. But it's the shepherds that are out there in the field. And let's go a little bit further and see what happens. In verse 9 of chapter 2, it says, And then an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were terrified. Why do you think they're terrified? They're thinking, oh, no. Who's after us now? What are they blaming on us? We are in trouble. We don't even know why we're in trouble. They were terrified. What have we done? Who did we upset? We must have upset some really big man because they've come with lights. They've come with big flashlights and they're shining them out there in the field. We are in trouble, but they couldn't understand what and they were terrified. They were afraid of what was going to go on. But the light was not from flashlights, not from torches, not from, from anything made by man. It says it was the glory of the Lord. And then the angel spoke to them and said, don't be afraid. Would you be afraid if you saw an angel? What do you think, you guys? Yes. Yeah, you would. No, yes, no. Why would you be afraid? Yeah, it just appears like that. Suddenly, you're not expecting it. You're looking at stars and suddenly the sky lights up and an angel appears. It'd be frightening. But then there's someone else who read the story a few times. And so he's thinking, okay, I'm not afraid. But it would be terrifying. It would be so strange if that happened. And then the angel says to them, don't be afraid. I have come to you with good news. At least. At least there's good news in it. It's not I have come to beat you. I have come to blame you, but I've come with good news that will cause great joy for all the people. But then what do you think those shepherds said? You got good news and you're telling us? Why would you tell us of all the people? Because most of the stories we tell are not even true anyway. We just make up stories and we tell the stories and you're coming to us with good news. I think they really wondered, why are you telling us? What's this all about? And I think they were thinking, you know what? I remember that priest, his name was Zechariah. I can understand an angel went to see Zechariah. I get it that an angel came to see Mary. And it says that Joseph was a just man. So I can understand why the angel would go and see a just man like Joseph. But really? God sent angels to us? And I think they're looking at each other and wondering, how could we ever get chosen? But he said, don't be afraid, I have this good news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And just what we talked about a few minutes ago, that here was a baby that was going to be born in a stable. How many of you kids here were born in a stable? Aha! Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and sister saying, no, not a chance. But does, it, does his room look like he was born in a stable? No, it doesn't even look like that. Okay, good. Getting a good report here. This is good. So they're getting the news that this baby is going to be born in a stable. And imagine angels come and tell the news, the glory shines around that... This baby is going to be born to you, the Messiah, the one you've been waiting for. How many of you have ever been in a stable? Anybody? You've been in a stable? Only one. Nobody else has been to a stable? A couple of? Anyone else? Have you ever been to a stable filled with animals? You have? Okay. Was it a nice place, cool place to visit? Yeah, no, why not? Because, and she says, I can't say this in church. <laughs> Is it with? Yeah, it probably wouldn't smell that good. No, exactly. Not a place where I'd be expecting this is a really good place to have a baby. Yeah, exactly. 
Right. So he said he was trying to feed them, and the animals are biting his hand, thinking his hand is part of the food. So he's thinking, I really don't like being in the stable. Well, here is this baby be born in the stable, and imagine these animals around. It does smell a little bit funny. And when you're in the stable, you don't look up. You've got to make sure you're looking down, because you've got to be careful how you step. Like this. Because of some of the stuff in the stable. But we won't go into it like our, our sister over here says, we can't say this in church. <laughs> it wasn't a nice place. It was a dirty place. But did you ever see a security check on the stable? How many of you either work in the UN, or, or sorry, the AU, or you visit the AU from time to time? Anybody here? Yeah, there's a bunch of us. And there's security checks. You have to show, right? You show your card. They check. Are you really the one? They check under your car. All of these security checks. When you're going to the stable, does anyone check? No. It's no big deal. But you know that's so interesting because Jesus was born there accessible. He wasn't behind a lot of screens. He didn't have a lot of guards around him, soldiers to guard him. Nobody had to be checked on the way in. Everyone was welcomed there. You'll find the baby in the stable, lying in a manger, the Prince of Peace. The manger was his cradle. Again, one who would understand the suffering and the ordinary ways of men. Can you picture it? Our Lord Jesus Christ, born in a stable and placed in a manger. Do you kids all know that song, Away in a Manger? Your brother knows it? Okay. Well, I tell you what. Why don't we all stand? Let's sing that song together, Away in a Manger, No Crib for a Bed. Let's stand up and we'll sing, but don't go anywhere. Stay right there because we got some more things to talk about. <clears throat> you know the song? Good. is still at this point. The sky has gone dark again. They've received this message and everything is still. And isn't that song, it actually is a lullaby. Isn't it just a peaceful song? I love to sing that last verse myself. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. And then when I sing about bless all the dear children, I say me too. Bless all of us dear children in your tender care. But are you ready? Now everything is quiet. The sky is dark. And suddenly all of heaven breaks loose. Suddenly it says a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Wow. Everything changes. <laughs> now you guys, tell me, 
Do you think the world is a peaceful place? No. What? You don't think so? No. Why? Why not? Tell me. Tell me why not. Because everyone sins and uh, Adam and Eve uh, had a dark heart. Dark knowledge, so everyone has a dark knowledge too. Yeah. Okay. You tell me. Don't let the microphone go too far. But tell me, why isn't it a peaceful world? There is war and slavery and stuff. And where, where did you hear about this? Slavery? Where did you hear about this war? Uh, there's an ISIS and an Iraq. Or yeah. Yemen. Oh, my goodness. You know about this, eh? And the slavery is in Libya. Yeah. Oh, boy. You go ahead. Why isn't it peaceful? Oh, sorry, sorry. Ooh. Sometimes the weather, sometimes it can have a tornado, it can have a typhoon, and it can have different kind of tornadoes. Sure. Okay. What about anyone else? What's going on in the world? You yell it from there. Tell me. Why isn't it peaceful? And many people? Mm -hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Now, okay. You didn't know that when you're listening to the news that they were listening to. You thought they're inside playing a game somewhere and they're listening. I hear all of those things and I'm not going to repeat them. Oh my goodness, but there's stuff going on in this world. There's war, there's problems, there's crime, there's slavery. All of these things going on, and yet what they heard all that time ago, peace on earth, goodwill to men. They started off, though, glory to God in the highest. And you know, there's such a simple message that we can get. If we have the glory of God and we give glory to God in our lives... We have peace in our hearts. Does any of you do any of you ever do a bad thing? Okay. They're volunteering this. They're telling me. Yeah. How do you feel when you do bad things? You feel bad, don't you? You don't feel good. And when do you get peace in your heart again? Hey, okay, there's a, yeah, when you sacrifice a lamb, boy. <laughs> we got some talking to do later, yeah. <laughs> when does the peace come? When you repent to God and you tell your parents, I'm sorry, right? We do say, I'm sorry to our parents, don't we? Yeah. So when we make it right, then we get that peace in our hearts again, right? So that, what does that do? It brings glory to God and then peace on earth, peace in our hearts. So when we have peace in our hearts, there's peace in our family. Peace in our hearts, there's peace in our community. And when there's that, that peace in our hearts, there's peace in our nation. And it comes when we give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace in my heart. Amen? Peace in our hearts when we give glory to God. The angels sang an amazing song. And let me tell you, congregation, and you kids, all of you, you sing like angels. Who was going to be the singer here? Who said? You? And there was another one. There was one of the girls who said you wanted to be a singer. I think. You want to be a singer, though. You sing like an angel already. But all of us are going to be that choir of angels, and we're going to sing together. Hark! The herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Let's stand again and let's sing that hymn, that carol. Hark the herald angels. And kids, don't go away. We got some more to go. <coughs> oh, sorry.
as you take your seats, tell your neighbor you really do sing like an angel. We've been singing about, oh, holy nights, how amazing. That night, that night divine when the angels, they come, they give a message. And then the angels come and sing and share glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill to man. And you know that message remains the same after these 2,000 years. And we need to ask God for that peace. We need to claim that peace in our lives. So the angels, the angels left them, <clears throat> verse 15 of Luke chapter 2, the angels left them and had gone into heaven, and the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see what these angels have been talking about. Let's go and see what the Lord has said, told us about these angels. And so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger, and when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And they all, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. And Mary treasured these things in her heart and pondered them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and all the things that they had heard, which were just as they had been told. Wow. Those, angel, or those uh, shepherds, I was just going to say, those shepherds were no angels. And that's probably true. But those shepherds had heard from an angel, had heard from the angels, and I'm sure they were thinking, who really are we to hear that message? Who are we that God sent angels to share this with us? And it was a night of, of wonder, of holy wonder, as they thought about an angel visiting them. How many of you ever had an angel visit you? Yeah? Okay. You and I got to talk. I want to hear this story. You saw an angel? Oh, yeah. Oh, they want to hear the story too. We'll have to arrange that. Yeah, we all want to hear that story. But you know, it's not so common. It's not so common. But wouldn't it be an amazing privilege for the angel to come and talk with you? Wouldn't you love it? Wouldn't you love it? How many would love a visit from an angel? Would you like? I would love a visit from an angel. I really would. And that's why I want to become a shepherd when I grow up. Because angels visit shepherds. That's what I found out. Angels talk to shepherds. But what do we find out about these shepherds? It says that they listened. They heard what the angels said. They heard. They knew it was a, a message from God. And they listened to it. And then what did they do? Did they lie back on their backs and, and look back into the sky? No. What did they do? They said, let's go back to Bethlehem. Let's go back to Bethlehem and see. Let's go and see all of these things. They were obedient. They went to see. They went to check out what God was telling them. And they found everything just as the Lord had told them. Isn't that good stuff? You know, when we hear God's word, when God speaks to us through scripture, and he does it here on a Sunday morning, he speaks to us through the songs, and some of them are messages from scripture, and then we go to our Sunday school classes, and we learn about God's word, and what do we do after? Are we obedient? Do we learn things in Sunday school? Hey, wait a minute here. Let me put this microphone on. Okay, do we hear, th or do we learn things in Sunday school? Yes! Church, hallelujah! Amen! <laughs> all of that work, all of that struggling, all of that studying for you, parents and teachers, volunteers, it's paying off. Praise the Lord. That is the sweetest choir of angels. Yes. They're learning. And you know, when we learn from the scripture, then we have to go and do what the scripture told us to do. Are we going and doing what the scripture told us to do from our lessons in Sunday school? Yes! Okay. Parents, are they? 
Oh, they're laughing. Why are they laughing? Hmm. But anyway, the shepherds, they went out. They went to see and find out, is it true what had been done? What they had been told about? And they had seen the angels, but now they came and saw the king of the angels. Just this little baby, this little baby boy, Jesus. Now they had seen God. They had seen his face in the Lord Jesus Christ. We haven't seen his face. Has any of, any of you seen God? No. no. But do, how many of you know God? Yeah. Do you see the hands? They haven't seen him, but they know him because they have seen him in their hearts and they've seen him through the word of God. And what do you do when you have good news like the shepherds had? What do you do when you've got a secret? When you have a secret, do you tell anybody? No. no. Really? So I, I can tell you secrets and you won't tell. You tell me a secret and then I'll go tell my friend over here. Don't tell anyone, but she told me a secret. Isn't that the way we do it so often? Oh, I'll keep the secret. We want the information. But you know, this is no secret. The angels came and this is good news for... Habasha only. No. It's good news for everyone. And so what did they do? They heard the news. They were obedient to do what God had told them to do. And then they went out. It says they spread the word everywhere. And people were amazed. Why were they amazed? Because it was shepherds. Imagine if the guys are bringing the animals on their way to Kara and they stop at the gate and the shepherd comes in. I just want to give you a word from the Lord. Are you going to give them a microphone? I'm not sure I'll be giving them a microphone. But you know, they went and everyone was amazed for two reasons why they're amazed. One, it's these naughty shepherds. These cheeky shepherds. Can we really believe them? But when they heard the news, they said, this news is wonderful. And they received that news, just like the shepherds, they received the news from heaven. And then what did the shepherds do? After they'd been around, they told everybody all the good news, then what did they do? They went, yeah, they went to sea, and then they came back. And it says they went back to their work. They went back to the fields. And sometimes we think when we've had something really exciting happen in our lives, then we think, okay, we want to stay. We don't want to go. We don't want to do anything. But they learned from God. They went and shared the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. And then they went about their daily work. And you can believe it that the shepherds from far, when they passed by, these shepherds stopped them and said, you got to hear how our weekend was. It was amazing. We saw angels, and they told the story of the good news. The Savior is born. To who? To the world. To every one of us. To all of us. The Savior is born to us. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to share the good news, just like the shepherds. You kids, do you know Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. So what you need to do, you need to be like the shepherds. And you, when you meet with your friends in school, in your neighborhood, you need to tell them the good news that Jesus is born. Go to the mountain, go to Entoto, go to Kilimanjaro, go to the mountains and tell the good news. Jesus Christ is born. Let's go, uh, let's stand up one more time. And kids, you can go back with your parents. Didn't these kids do an amazing job of preaching today? Thank you for all of your help. You go back and let's stand to sing. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born.